Mao Zedong, the founding father of the People's Republic of China, was actually born on December 26, 1893 in Hunan Province of China. He came from a peasant family. His parents were Mao Yichong and Wen Qimei. He was the third child in a family of five children. Mao's family was relatively poor, but his father valued education and wanted Mao to receive a good education. At a young age, Mao showed intellectual promise and a thirst for knowledge. His father arranged for him to attend a local primary school, where he excelled in his studies. Mao grew up in a rural environment, heavily influenced by traditional Chinese culture and practices. He learned about Confucianism, Chinese classics, and local folklore. These early experiences would later influence his thinking and strategies in his political career. After completing his primary education, Mao moved to the provincial capital, Changsha, to attend the Hunan First Normal School. This move exposed him to a more urban and modern environment, where he came into contact with a wider range of political and social ideas. During his time in Changsha, Mao became interested in new intellectual trends that were emerging in China. He was drawn to ideas associated with the new culture movement, which called for modernization, science, democracy, and the rejection of traditional Confucian values. Mao Zedong became a founding member of the Chinese Communist Party in 1921. The CCP was officially established during a meeting held in Shanghai between July 23 and July 31, 1921. Mao was one of the 13 delegates who attended this meeting, representing a small but significant group of young radicals and intellectuals who were committed to socialist and communist ideas. During this meeting, the CCP was formed with the assistance and guidance of the Communist International, an international organization that aimed to promote global communist revolutions. Chen Duxiu was elected as the first general secretary of the CCP, and Mao Zedong and others were active participants in the discussions and decisions made at the Congress. Mao's involvement in the early years of the CCP was marked by his enthusiasm for revolutionary change and his dedication to bringing about social and economic equality in China. He was deeply influenced by Marxist-Leninist thought and believed that the peasant class could play a crucial role in the revolutionary movement. In 1927, a significant event occurred in Chinese history known as the Northern Expedition, which led to a split between the Chinese Communist Party and the Nationalist Party and subsequently forced the CCP to retreat to southern China. The Northern Expedition was a military campaign launched by the Nationalist Party with the goal of unifying China under a single central government and ending the warlord era that had plagued the country. The campaign began in 1926, with KMT forces advancing from the south towards the north. At the beginning of the Northern Expedition, there was a nominal cooperation between the CCP and the KMT. Both parties were part of a united front against warlords and foreign influence, particularly in the context of the fight against the Bayong government. However, in 1927, tensions between the CCP and the KMT escalated. Chiang Kai-shek, a prominent KMT leader, launched a violent anti-communist purge in Shanghai on April 12, 1927. This marked a turning point, as KMT forces attacked and suppressed communists in various regions. In the early 1930s, the CCP faced with mounting military pressure and dwindling resources. Their leadership, including Mao Zedong, made the strategic decision to abandon their base areas in Jiangxi province and embark on a long and perilous retreat to find a new base in northern China. The long march began in October 1934, when around 100,000 CCP soldiers and supporters, including Mao Zedong, embarked on a grueling journey. They faced harsh weather, difficult terrain, and numerous battles with both nationalist forces and local warlords. During the long march, Mao's leadership skills and strategic thinking became evident. He employed guerrilla warfare tactics, maintained discipline among his troops, and made critical decisions that enabled the CCP forces to survive and continue moving forward. After a year of travel and struggle, the CCP forces reached northern China, particularly the Shanxi province. This marked the end of the Long March. 
The journey covered thousands of kilometers and demonstrated the resilience and determination of the CCP under Mao's leadership. The Long March is considered a symbol of the CCP's endurance and determination in the face of adversity. It also played a crucial role in solidifying Mao Zedong's position as a prominent leader within the party, setting the stage for his further influence and contributions in the years that followed. The Second Sino-Japanese War, often considered part of World War II, began in 1937 when Japanese forces invaded China. This conflict led to widespread devastation and suffering across China. The nationalists, led by Chiang Kai-shek, and the communists, led by Mao Zedong, set aside their differences temporarily to cooperate against the Japanese invasion. The United Front allowed them to focus on resisting the Japanese occupation and preserving Chinese sovereignty. The Chinese people endured significant hardships during the war, including brutal Japanese occupation, massacres, and widespread destruction. The United Resistance effort involved both military actions and civilian efforts to undermine Japanese control. The Second Sino-Japanese War ended in 1945 with Japan's defeat in World War II. The war's conclusion created an opportunity for China to rebuild and determine its future direction. With the end of World War II, the tensions between the nationalists and communists resurfaced. Despite their united front against Japan, the two parties had fundamentally different visions for the future of China. The nationalists held power in the urban areas of China, while the communists had gained strength in the countryside. The resumption of the civil war between the nationalists and communists marked the beginning of a final showdown for control of China. The communists employed guerrilla warfare tactics and sought to gain the support of the rural population, while the nationalists had the advantage of more advanced military equipment and control over major cities. The Chinese Civil War ended in 1949 with the Communist Party's victory. On October 1, 1949, Mao Zedong officially declared the establishment of the People's Republic of China. Mao's declaration took place in Tiananmen Square in Beijing and was attended by a large crowd of people. During the ceremony, Mao announced the founding of the PRC, declaring that the Chinese people have stood up. This statement symbolized China's rejection of foreign domination and its determination to assert its sovereignty and independence. The establishment of the People's Republic of China brought the Chinese Communist Party to power, and Mao Zedong became the chairman of the Central People's Government, effectively becoming the country's leader. The PRC marked the beginning of a new era in Chinese history, characterized by the implementation of communist policies, land reforms, and social changes. The proclamation of the PRC also had international implications, as it marked the transition from the Republic of China under the leadership of Chiang Kai-shek to the communist-led government. The Republic of China retreated to the island of Taiwan, where it continued to claim authority over all of China. It thus strikes us as strange to be asked, as we are so often asked, do you expect to return to mainland China? If a member of one's community should be forced from his house by lawless elements, if most of his belongings are seized, and if some members of his family are held captive in the house, would one ask him, do you want your house back someday? Yes, we believe we will go back. The Great Leap Forward was a large-scale economic and social campaign launched by the Chinese Communist Party under the leadership of Mao Zedong in 1958. The campaign aimed to rapidly transform China from an agrarian economy into an industrialized socialist society. However, it ultimately led to significant economic and humanitarian challenges. One of the central features of the Great Leap Forward was the establishment of rural communes. These communes were intended to consolidate land, labor, and resources for more efficient agricultural production. Communes also encompassed industry and various aspects of daily life. As part of the campaign, small-scale backyard steel furnaces were set up across the country to produce steel and other industrial goods. However, these furnaces often used poor quality materials and improper methods, leading to the production of unusable steel and wasting valuable resources. The combination of poor planning, mismanagement, 
and unrealistic expectations led to significant economic problems. Agricultural production suffered due to the diversion of resources to industrial projects, leading to food shortages. Additionally, natural disasters, such as floods, exacerbated the difficulties. The Great Leap Forward is infamous for causing one of the most devastating famines in history. From 1959 to 1961, tens of millions of people died due to starvation and related causes. The exact death toll remains a subject of debate among historians. In 1961, the campaign was officially acknowledged as a failure, and its most extreme policies were scaled back. Mao stepped back from day-to-day -day governance, and a more pragmatic approach to economic management emerged. The Cultural Revolution was a tumultuous political and social movement that took place in China from 1966 to 1976. It was initiated by Mao Zedong and aimed to enforce his vision of communist ideology, eliminate perceived capitalist, traditional, and cultural elements, and consolidate his power within the Chinese Communist Party. Mao Zedong launched the Cultural Revolution in response to what he saw as a growing bureaucratic and revisionist threat within the CCP. He believed that elements of bourgeois and capitalist ideology were infiltrating the party and Chinese society. The goal was to cleanse the party and society of these elements and promote a radical form of communism. The movement was characterized by the formation of Red Guard groups, primarily composed of young students and workers, who were enthusiastic supporters of Mao. They were tasked with criticizing and often physically attacking individuals seen as enemies of the revolution, including intellectuals, party officials, and those associated with traditional culture. Schools, universities, and cultural institutions were targeted, and many teachers, professors, and intellectuals were criticized, humiliated, and sometimes subjected to violence. Books, artworks, and artifacts deemed bourgeois or counter-revolutionary were destroyed. The Cultural Revolution led to factionalism and internal struggles within the CCP. Key figures like Liu Shaoqi and Deng Xiaoping were purged from power, and the radical faction aligned with Mao gained control. The Cultural Revolution created widespread chaos and disruption in Chinese society. Families were torn apart as younger generations turned against their elders, and traditional values were heavily suppressed. Lin Biao, a close associate of Mao and a prominent figure during the Cultural Revolution, was later accused of plotting against Mao and attempting to seize power. He later died under mysterious circumstances in a plane crash in 1971. Mao Zedong the founding father of the People's Republic of China and a significant figure in world history, passed away on September 9, 1976. He died at the age of 82 in Beijing. Mao Zedong's legacy is complex and multifaceted. He is revered by some for his role in liberating China from foreign domination, unifying the country, and promoting socialist values. However, he is also criticized for the massive human suffering caused by policies like the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution. His life and impact remain subjects of ongoing historical analysis and debate both in China and internationally.